Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. Today we are going to continue our study about the God of Miracles. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you are our strength. Father, you are the greater one, the most high. Father, you are El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Father, we pray for your strength for everyone who is listening to my voice in their spirit, soul and body. Father, we pray you grant them strength to move forward, to overcome, to triumph and to succeed. Father, we pray for your goodness, kindness and mercy upon them. Father, comfort them, encourage them. Father, we pray you grant them peace, peace that passeth understanding. Father, let your peace guard and protect their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And Father, we pray that you are still the God of Joseph. Father, you are with us and we will prosper and we will succeed. We will triumph and we will move forward. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon the work of our hands. Father, we thank you. We are blessed of the maker of heaven and earth. Father, we are blessed of El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Father, we thank you. We are fruitful. We will multiply. We will grow, we will increase, and we will expand. Father, we thank you for your great, great kindness and mercy toward us. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and skill in your word, your will, and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts, and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we pray you grant us word in due season. Father, we pray you grant us answers and solutions. And Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal everyone who is listening to my voice. Father, heal them. Father, we pray your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness and every form of disease and every form of pain. And Father, we pray your anointing break every yoke, remove every burden, break every chain. And Father, we thank you for your marvelous, marvelous, glorious help for us. Father, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Father, we thank you. People are being delivered totally and completely from all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of diseases and all kinds of pain. Father, you are El Shaddai. Father, we pray you meet all our needs and satisfy all our desires. Father, we pray that we be filled and we have extra. And Father, we pray for a store of money for people above and beyond their expenses. And Father, we pray that all the debts be reduced and eliminated, totally, completely wiped out. And Father, we pray for financial freedom for people. Freedom to serve you. Freedom to pursue your plans and your purposes in their lives. Father, we thank you for your glorious help. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be your holy name. Father, we thank you so much. You heard and answered our prayers. Father, we thank you so much for your mighty help in our life. And Father, we pray you open our hearts and minds to listen to your word and to understand it and apply it in our lives. Father, we thank you so much for marvelous results in our lives. Father, you are good, you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be his holy name. We serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. We serve the God of miracles. Our God is El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Our God made heaven and earth. Created heaven and earth by speaking them into existence. At one point of time there was no earth. There was no heaven. God spoke them into existence. Uh, go with me to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, look at verse 3, and it says this, through faith, we understand something, right, this is something every Christian ought to understand, that the worlds were framed by the word of God, what do we understand, the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen, 
the earth that you can see the tree that you can see the fruits that you can see the animals that you can see the heaven and the clouds and the rain and all those wonderful things that we can see were not made of things which do appear see god is not like a human uh, builder or an inventor a human builder right would use the materials that are available right and use them to build a house or uh, any other structure an inventor again uses the materials that are available and he combines them to invent a product but god did not make heaven and earth and all that live in them by using things which do appear which can be seen and touched in the natural now he spoke them into existence he spoke words and his word formed all that we can see and touch and feel go with me to psalm hallelujah to jesus psalm 33 and look at um, verse 6 by the word of the lord were the heavens made and the hall the host of them by the breath of his mouth the word of god is uh, called the breath of his mouth in various places in the bible hallelujah uh, in fact for example go with me to first thessalonians or oh, sorry um second thessalonians chapter 2 hallelujah to jesus notice how the bible talks about how god will slay um the antichrist it says and then shall the wicked be revealed talking about the antichrist whom the lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth again the word spirit is also translated breath right the with the spirit of his mouth or the breath of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming but then if you go down to revelation chapter 19 here again the bible teaches us how god would slay um antichrist and the wicked that follow him look at this our god uh, the name of our lord jesus is the word of god right verse 13 it says and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god and his army and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword right sharp sword what is the sharp sword that goes out of the mouth of god we know from ephesians chapter 6 right that it is the word of god god used his word to create the heaven and the earth and all that live in them right and he also uses his word to defeat his enemies that's why it is so important that you listen to the word of god and hear it because there is power in the word to build your life to create things in your life if there is no prosperity through the word of god you can create prosperity in your life when you trust god based on his word he would create prosperity when you speak his word god will take your word and create prosperity the bible says i will create the fruit of his lips hallelujah when you put god's word in your mouth and you speak it hallelujah god will create the fruit of your lips hallelujah to jesus that's why you you need to keep listening to the word of god so that you will be uh, trained and you will be equipped and you, you and you will know what word to use and how to use it how to receive from god if there is wilderness in your life you need to know how to trust god and to transform it into the garden of the lord yeah the bible teaches these things go with me to isaiah i say chapter 51 look at this verse 3 
For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Now God is well able to do that, and he is still doing it for everyone who believes. Hallelujah. See, this earth was uninhabitable in the beginning. Look at Genesis chapter 1. Verse 2, the earth was without form, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now how did God transform this useless piece of planet into a planet filled with life and glory and His goodness? How did He do it? By speaking His word. Do you see this? Eh? And God's word will not only build your life and change things, it will also help you to uh, overcome the adversary, overcome all the works of the adversary. When the devil comes against you, you defeat him by the word. You use the word of God to defeat the devil. Like our Lord Jesus did, both in his first coming, right, when he was tempted of the devil, he spoke, he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And when he comes back, how does he slay the Antichrist? By his word. Right? So how do you defeat devil when he comes against you? By his word, by speaking his word. That's how our Lord Jesus defeats his, defeats his adversaries. That's how we defeat our adversary, the devil. Right? Hallelujah. So listen. Right? Be diligent in hearing the word, listening to the word, studying the word and, and, and be equipped and be ready at all times. Hallelujah. That's when, you know, when an attack comes against you, you will be prepared and you will be able to withstand the attacks of the devil and you will also be equipped to overcome him and defeat him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, then now let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 8. We are going to uh, study the next miracle. Previously, we focused on the miracle uh, where uh, God plagued the entire land of Egypt with lies, right? L I C E. Hallelujah. Now we are going to uh, begin from verse 20. Exodus chapter 8, verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. It's interesting that God sends his servants early in the morning, rising up early in the morning. You know, if you study the book of Jeremiah, you will see this again and again. God would say, I sent my servants rising up early <laughs> in the morning. Because God wants to um, uh, give them the word first thing in the morning right early in the morning before other things starts occupying their mind right he sends his servants to give them the word in the morning hallelujah see we publish these messages at four o'clock in the morning for you <laughs> so whatever time you get up right and then you, you you it will be available for you you can just get up and listen and it will encourage you it will strengthen you it will equip you hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right uh, let's read again. The Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he comes forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee right, and upon your servants and upon your people and into your houses and to the houses of the Egyptians and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are imagine this this is swarms of flies and different kinds of flies right all of them coming humongous number of flies and right? covering the entire land usually flies don't enter into houses that much You'll find uh, flies in, in, you know, in places where there are fruits and sweet and uh, where they prepare food and so on in certain kinds of places, right? They are not there at, in, in uh, they are not present everywhere. Definitely not in these numbers. 
here god is sending flies right in in a, in a in large number and they are not only there where you are you know where there is some food available or some fruits or some eatables or, and stuff like that no the flies are there everywhere everywhere in the houses in the workplaces right in the ground right they have insects everywhere do you see this right and uh, <laughs> when you have flies everywhere it's it's a big problem they they're sitting on your face and in, in your nose and um, in your body and in your food in in the vessels that you are using you are trying to work the flies are upon the table on the paper on the parchments and um, you are sitting on the throne throne is full of flies and chair chair is full of flies ground is full of flies you keep your <laughs> feet in the ground your feet is covered with the flies right so everywhere flies again it's interesting that god didn't send um, you know some of those majestic birds like eagles right to come and attack uh, pharaoh <laughs> instead he used flies you know it is very insulting to to somebody like pharaoh <laughs> he considered himself god and and, and, and uh, the egyptians were the most powerful nation in the world yet again what did god send to humble them flies alleluia small creatures <laughs> it's interesting god didn't send an army of angels right the bible talks about how one angel went and uh, slaughtered 180000 of um, sennacherib's uh, army the king of assyria right during the time of hezekiah <laughs> Yet God didn't send a multitude of angels. No, He sent a swarm of flies, and Pharaoh and his people could not handle flies. Eh? See that—that's the very <laughs> interesting thing. Right? He's being humbled by small things: frogs, lice, flies. <laughs> right? Hallelujah to Jesus. Eh? God is showing him something. He is showing who is Lord. You think you are the most powerful person? No, I am Lord. I am above you. I am greater than you. See, this is the lesson Adam uh, failed to learn. He forgot that God is above him, and His word is above his will. right about whatever adam thought is right or what he should do right god's word is about everything god's word is about the voice of his wife eve see he forgot that he was king of this earth but he forgot there is a king of kings above him that's why he fell eh people like nebuchadnezzar people like um, uh, saul Saul was a king he was he was small in his own eyes the bible says god made him king but after becoming king god is giving him commandments and he's not listening to his he's rebelling against the command, commandments of god time and again now he gives various reasons but the the point is god said something and he didn't obey it Right? the voice of god is about everything else the word of god is supreme to everything else see that's why you should pay attention to the voice of god to the word of god and exalt it above everything else in your life does not matter who says what if what they are saying is contrary to god's word you just reject that and choose god's word every time Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. See that's how we show that Jesus is truly Lord over us. You remember our Lord Jesus once said, "Why are you calling me Lord, Lord and not doing what I'm telling you to do?" Right? You remember that? What shows that Jesus is Lord above us? What shows here that Pharaoh actually acknowledges that the uh, God of Abraham is Lord over him? 
See, when he actually accepts what God is saying, and when he obeys it, he is accepting that the God of Abraham is Lord over him. Do you understand this? Right? Hallelujah. It's so important that we hear the word of God and we do it. Right? Hallelujah to Jesus. God's word is not some kind of... Um, and it's not just for educating your mind. Right? You know, we study so many things in, um, uh, in our schools and colleges and many things we don't even apply in our life. We read a lot of uh, uh, newspapers, magazines and books and most of the things we don't use in our life. Now we should not follow that kind of a habit while reading the Bible. When you're reading the Bible, you are reading it to hear from God. That's one aspect. And the second reason you are reading the word is to apply it in your life. Right? The Bible says, be doers of the word, not hearers only. Do you understand this? Hallelujah. What's the problem with Pharaoh here? He's hearing what God is saying. But he's not doing what God is saying. And right that that's the problem with pharaoh that was the problem with adam he heard what god said but then when it came came time to apply it right he hearkened to the voice of his wife and did not obey what god said do you see this right so remember as a christian you read the word you hear the word right that's very important reading studying hearing meditating very very important but it's not complete until you obey it until you do what was written in the bible hallelujah all right now let's keep uh, moving forward and then god in this particular verse he says something very important i want you to uh, focus on this i will sever in that day the land of Goshen or he is saying he will cut off the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth and I'll put a division between my people and your people tomorrow shall this sign be so God is giving further evidence to Pharaoh that he is Lord right first he began to do these great and mighty miracles which showed him that uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is truly the maker of heaven and earth and this the supreme God, right? It, it showed Pharaoh that. <coughs> now God is showing further evidence. Not only is he bringing this great plague upon uh, Egypt and Pharaoh, but he is... Uh, making a difference here he's showing a difference in treatment <laughs> right he, he's saying even though the people of israel dwell within the boundaries of egypt they lived in goshen which is a part of egypt the plague that comes upon egypt will not touch the israelites who are living within the borders of egypt everybody else will be touched by it but not the israelites god is saying i will sever right or divide or cut off right uh, israel from this plague right it will land upon the egyptians it will befall them but it won't touch the israelites who are living in the land of goshen hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so god is giving pharaoh further proof that he is in control of all these things you understand that he is the one bringing it and he is also in control of it. Okay. You know, it's very difficult when, when, when you are doing something in this large scale. See, let's say, imagine a water flooding, right? Usually, what does the water do? It will destroy everything, everything in its path, right? When, when there is a tsunami, Right? And the water is raging and the sea is raging and the water comes into the land. It won't make a distinction. Right? It won't say, hey, look at that. Hey, he's a friend of mine. 
<laughs> Let's not touch him. So we will spare his car. We will go around his car. We won't touch his car. <laughs> the tsunami is not going. Oh, that 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 is that nation. Oh, I like that uh, nation. I like what they do. I like their food. Right. So let's not touch them. Right. We will touch others. I know the, the the water doesn't make any distinction like that. The wind doesn't make any distinction like that. It will just destroy everything in its path. Right. Now, God does not want Pharaoh to think. Don't think these are just some kind of natural, you know, disasters that are just coming upon you. No, I'm sending it. And I want you to know, I'm going to give you further evidence that I'm in control of all this. So, this plague of flies will come upon you, but it won't touch my people who are living within your borders. Okay? Hallelujah. So, it is clear evidence to Pharaoh that God is actually in control of it and he is specifically bringing against me and my people because I am refusing to let the children of Israel go. Do you see this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay? And um, you, only, you, you need to know that God likes to do this. He likes to make a distinction between the people who serve him and he who don't go with me to Malachi Malachi and look at this part chapter 3 right after the uh, tithe um, verses right uh, there is this controversy right God is um, uh, he is dealing with the, the people of Israel concerning the words that they are speaking Verse 13, it says, Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, What have we spoken so much against thee? You have said it is vain to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Now we call the proud happy. Yeah, they that work wickedness are set up. Yeah, they that tempt God are even delivered. They are say, accusing God of being unjust. They are accusing God of uh, not rewarding those people who are serving him. Right? That's what they are accusing him of. When you speak words like this saying it's vain to serve God or it is pointless. And there is no profit or benefit in serving God. When you say words like that, that's exactly what you are saying. You are accusing God of being unjust. And you are accusing God of um, not rewarding the people who serve him. Right? And God, God took, uh, and not only that, they saying, you know, the people who are not serving God and the people who are doing the opposite of what God says, they are prospering, they are being delivered, they are even being set up. Right? <laughs> Words like that are contrary to God's justice, accusing God of being unjust and accusing God of uh, not rewarding his people. Right? And God took issue with it. And then later in verse 16, he said, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. They spoke, of course, according to God's word. And the Lord hearkened. Notice how God hears what is coming out of our mouth. The theme today seems to be <laughs> the words that are coming out of our mouth. That seems to be the uh, now, uh, second theme. We are meditating on the miracles of God. But God is bringing out that theme in today's message, you know throughout the message that's just coming out. I didn't plan it like this. Right? Look at this. Then they that feared the Lord spake off on one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. Heard what? Heard what they are saying out of their mouth. Notice in the previous three verses, he, he also heard the words spoken by his people. He, they were speaking negative things, stout words against God. He heard that. And here the people who fear him and honor him were speaking highly of him. He is hearing that also. And when he heard the words of those who fear him, he noted it down. Right? <laughs> uh, a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. His name means, um, if you look at the names of God, they reveal his nature, his characteristics, his attributes, right? 
so these people had a correct knowledge of who god is and how he acts see the others who were speaking stout words they were accusing god contrary to who he is contrary to what he does and how he behaves and god is a righteous judge he rewards his people he does not forget his people right he is merciful kind and good to his people and his face is against those who do evil that's the true nature of god right but they were speaking contrary to god's nature but these people they feared god they honored god and they thought upon his name his characteristics his attributes who he is and what he does right and they spoke accurately about him and it was written in the book of remembrance god made a note of it right and notice what does he say verse 17 and they shall be mine saith the lord of hosts in that day when i make my jewels and i will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serves him then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth god and him that serveth him not notice how he is saying god will make a distinction between his people and the wicked hallelujah this is something that god likes to do god does these things hallelujah hallelujah to jesus if you look in genesis the, the there was famine in the land of canaan abraham is living in i'm sorry isaac was living in philistine right the king and all the other philistines they, they they don't have water right the land is bad the land is dry it's broken it's not suitable for cultivation but then here is isaac who obeys god and serves god and god makes a distinction right when isaac digs a well he finds water he's digging again and again and again and every time he digs he finds water there is the king his noblemen and all the entire nation of the philistines they are trying stuff nothing is working right but isaac whenever he digs he is finding water over and over and over and over again god makes a distinction between his people those who serve him and those who do not serve him and you will find the that in the coming days more and more this distinction will be made visible it will be made plain it will be made very obvious you can't miss it when joseph is working in the household of potiphar he has many servants they are all doing work this different kinds of work but when joseph does some work it prospers it is visible the difference is very visible there are those you know egyptians and other slaves right they are working nothing is happening but when something is touched by joseph when it's put in his hands and he does that the blessing goes into work it prospers it does well and even a heathen Pot- potiphar was not a hebrew he is not a covenant man he is a heathen right and even he can see the distinction he can see the difference right so much so that he puts more and more stuff into the hands of uh, joseph and at one point of time he just put everything into the hands of joseph and the bible is very particular about the <laughs> what happened when he put everything into the hands of joseph look at this genesis genesis chapter 39 look at this verse 5 and it came to pass from the time say from the time from the time he may he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had right see previously some things were in the hands of joseph and whatever he did god prospered right but now potiphar saw that and he wanted that blessing 
in everything that he had so what did he do he took all his estate right and all the things in his house and he put everything in the hands of joseph he's a smart fellow right and from the moment that all those things came into the hands of joseph the bible says look at the second part of verse 5 the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field <laughs> and potiphar was smart he left all that he had in joseph's hand notice how god made a distinction between joseph who served him and others this is something god does right god is god will do this for you in your workplace in your school in your college in your job in your business in your ministry everywhere god is going to make clear that you are serving him and he is going to bless the work of your hands and he is going to protect you see when you do things he you know things are going to work it's going to prosper it's going to succeed it's going to do well and your boss will want to add more and more responsibilities to you he will put more and more in your hands i have seen this when i was working when i became a team manager i started with seven people right and god blessed my work and then seven became 20 and 20 became 40 at one point of time i was handling 55 people in my team in, in the corporate world well, that's quite big right for my cad for my category as a team manager right and uh, so you know he kept adding do you see this right yeah. god will do that for you wherever you are working whatever you are doing god will add more to you you won't diminish you won't reduce right you won't decrease no god will add more to you the bible says the lord will increase more and more you and your children you will increase you will multiply you will not diminish take hold of these verses right and and look to god stand on them look to god based on these verses say father thank you for your blessing upon me thank you for making a distinction between me and others hallelujah hallelujah to jesus god will do this for you you know the bible says you will be the head and not the tail what is he saying he is telling his people you will be the head i want you to rule dominate have reign right i want you to have dominion see god wants his people to be in high positions eh above only not beneath notice again god is making a distinction between those who serve him and those he, those who don't he's saying you will be the head you will not be the tail you will be at the top you will not be at the you will not be beneath you will be above only never beneath hallelujah now god wants great things for his people pay attention to his word listen to his word apply it in your life do it in your life put your faith and trust in god based on what you know what we have seen today right these verses right and whatever other verses god puts in your heart right and god will make a distinction between you who knows god and those who don't know him he will exalt you he will promote you he will prosper you and he will protect you you know some people may be affected by various things you will not be touched by them the bible says a thousand shall fall at your side a 10000 at your right hand but it will not come near you see moses wrote that psalm right he knows these things he has seen this with his own eyes right the entire population of egypt was touched by these plagues but israel was not touched at all not even a bit right not even a bit that's what he's saying a thousand shall fall at your side a 10000 at your right hand but it will not come near you god almighty will make a distinction hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to god blessed be his holy name hallelujah to jesus 
God is going to do great things for you. Take hold of these verses. Put your faith in God based on these verses. God will do awesome things for you. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.